speed paint is going to be a lot simpler than my usual ones because I'm only going with two colors um, using the white background and black line work. This illustration is of, of course, Mr. Rogers. I was recently inspired after hearing about the documentary, which I still need to get around to watching. Actually, just, just after watching the trailer because it was so, I don't know, a uh, tearjerker <laughs> or whatever. I don't know, it had me all emotionally engaged. And I was like, I remember Mr. Rogers when I was a kid because my grandma used to turn it on all the time. She always talked about how, like, he was one of the better TV shows because he was calm and not as hyperactive as the shows we have today. Um, this illustration was sort of inspired by like 1960s spot illustrations, which often used an incredibly limited color palette. Um, they usually focused on one bright color and then shades within that within that range. Like you use sort of like a dark red, a faded pink, an orange, and stuff like that. Or if you went with blues, you'd do sort of like blue and green. Or you'd pick like opposing colors like blue and I don't know, orange or blue and red, um, a dark color and a bright color. For this I decided to go with red because of his sweater, that would be my main focal point. And then I'm going to use a little bit of yellow later on. First I sort of box in the shape and then I actually just erase around it to create the sweater. And I wanted to do no line work on the colored part, I want it to look sort of like, um, I think print work, like running it through a printing press. I actually took a class where I remember making stamps and sort of, or like carving out on like a large chunk and then laying it on a press and then printing it out and everything would be like a bright solid color. Um, and then I would just sort of add some pen details and afterwards. And I wanted to sort of replicate that digitally because I think that is the way um, a lot of children's books were published in the 1960s. They were sort of done with like printmaking or like very light watercolor acrylic. Um, it really depends on who the artist is, but yeah, I wanted to do something like that. Very simple, limited, with dot eyes, and I thought Mr. Rogers sort of, I don't know, fit that because he is from around the 1960s. That was when he was at his prime, even though the show kind of was at its prime forever. I mean, I feel like a lot of us grew up with it. Maybe not kids nowadays, but I think probably up until like the millennial generation, Mr. Rogers was still running on TV. They are still running, um, or it's a newer show called Daniel Tiger, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, I think, which is actually, I'll be drawing the Daniel Tiger in a puppet form in a minute, but it's actually a spin-off CGI show on PBS, I believe, based on the Mr. Rogers like world, universe. Um, Daniel Tiger is actually one of the <laughs> one of the first puppets Mr. Rogers had created for the show. And here I'm adding in the second color, I'm using yellow for the king's crown. Um, I don't remember her name, I think, was it Lady Elaine? She was this really, really creepy puppet, and I contemplated having him hold that, but I wanted the drawing to be wholesome. I remember Lady Elaine used to terrify me as a child. Like, there was something about her weird, creepy face and her, her like, it, she was all red in the face, like she was an alcoholic, or like she was screaming. She reminded me of some teachers I had in like second grade. No, third grade. That was when I had like a really nasty teacher. I was used to actually growing up, um, when I was in school, like elementary school, there would be like a nice main teacher and then a really mean side teacher that was usually there for like ironically like special needs kids, which didn't seem very fitting because they were usually like they had no patience and they just seemed to really dislike children but anyway back to mr rogers i think his show is really wholesome and like sweet and i used to love the way he dressed i wanted to dress like him when i was a kid um i'm adding a little blush here a little pink on the the face to add a little um extra detail. That's something that you don't really see a lot in older illustrations. It's sort of a newer thing. Um, I think in the time because they were focusing on like simple screen screening or like uh, printmaking techniques where you, cho you chose like three colors and then the line work. There wasn't a lot of um, pastels. But uh, or like uh, what is it like light watercolor touches. This is more of a I think this technique sort of popped in more popular in the 80s doing like the light wash in a face. I kept it because um, 
it sort of goes with the, the red color, so it falls into the same color scheme. Um, I'm gonna fix up his cape a little bit, which is something that they probably couldn't do back in the day. Since I'm working digitally, and you've probably noticed, but I actually just slapped images of what I'm drawing on the bottom to replicate it. That makes it a lot easier for me. I just plop them in another layer, and then I delete them when I'm done. Because hopping between an image and stuff doesn't work, unless I'm at my desk where I can have it on my computer while I work on my iPad. But I didn't do that, so I just kind of keep them in the bottom so I can always reference them. I do this when working on my own comics as well, because um, it makes it easier to always know like the face of the character. Because sometimes I slip up when I'm drawing if I'm not looking at an older drawing, and like I won't color someone's hair in right, or like I'll draw their nose slightly different, and then I'll have to go in and fix it, and it just saves a lot of effort. And this is Daniel Tiger, or my simplified version of him. He's at the bottom in his like old, I don't know, worn out puppet glory. And um, I'm getting towards the end of this, but I hope you like this because I'm doing a follow up. Um, I'll be doing Jim Henson next. And I'm not sure who after that. Maybe Bill Nye. I don't remember his name, but maybe the Reading Rainbow guy. Um, anyway, let me know what you think and comment in the bottom or in the comments what you think of Mr. Rogers or my drawing or if you grew up with this show or if you know what Daniel Tiger is or I don't know, pretty much anything. And I'll see ya.